now more than ever, we need truth. Not your truth or my truth, but the truth, Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, the life. Lies, spin, hype, show, whatever it is you want to call it, it's killing us. Hosea chapter 4 starts a discussion into the truth. And uh, I'm going to work from the translation uh, from the message, uh, if you will. And, you know, the message tries to put it in to more modern English and and it's a paraphrase really. But Hosea 1, 4, 1, excuse me, Hosea 4, 1 says, Attention all Israelites, God's message, God indicts the whole population. No one is faithful. No one loves. No one knows the first thing about God. And, you know, if I look at it in, in the King James, that same passage says, hear the word of the Lord. So that's what, that's what uh, the message is saying is uh, attention, God's message. And then it says, um, for the Lord have uh, a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, not mercy, not knowledge of God in the land. So I'm giving you both translations there. But the message is where I'm going to spend most of my time today. Attention all Israelites, God's message. God indicts the whole population. No one is faithful. No one loves. No one knows the first thing about God. No one knows the first thing about God. And I don't know if I'm officially getting old or not. Um, I mean, I am getting old, but uh, I don't know if, if, if that's really the case, that uh, that's why I look at these things this way. But I look at our society, and it was unusual for someone to reach the age that they could drive and not know how to change a tire on a car. And yet I suspect there are many people on the road who do not know how to change the tire on a car. It's knowledge that no one knows the first thing about. I, I, there's many young people who have no idea how to change their oil on their car or do a tune-up or put in spark plugs or any, any of those things because we just don't do that anymore. There's many that, that don't know how to cook. They can order stuff online and have it show up or whatever, but they don't know how to cook. We've, we've lost that because we've stopped teaching it. And within the church, there are many who do not know how to seek God. They do not know how to really worship God or hear from God or, or, or many of these different things that we might have taken for granted. They don't know how to do. Why? Because we've stopped teaching them. Oh, sure, we have, we have fog lights and fog lights. Well, fog machines and, and bright lights. That's what I was trying to say. Fog machines and bright lights. And, and we can turn the lights down in the room and we can create an atmosphere that is rock concert-like. And they know how to wave their hand and sing. Not putting that down, by the way. Just saying. But they don't know God. They know a church experience, but they don't know God. The message goes on and says, All this cussing and lying and killing, theft and loose sex, sheer anarchy, one murder after another, and man, that sounds like our society some, sometimes. So the first thing that I wanted to teach you today is this. We need the truth. And so we have to recognize that we have the lack of truth. Now, it's, it's a word that I can use with, with two meanings here because, um, one, I can be talking about the truth in, in what we would literally call the truth, just knowing, you know, right from wrong or facts from fiction, etc. But there's also the fact that God is the truth, that Jesus is the truth. And we have a lack of Jesus in our 
experience. The first thing we need to do is know the truth. They say, you know, a good lawyer doesn't ask a question he doesn't already know the answer to. But for a good Christian experience, a good relationship with God, we need to know the truth. We need to know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We need to know the truth. It brings everything else into perspective. It gives you something to compare things to. It gives you the ability to discern when we know the truth. And then we need to teach the truth. And within our churches, we need to teach the truth. Too much feel goodism, not enough truth, is crippling us and hurting us. As I said, verse 2 says, All this cussing and lying and killing, theft and loose sex, sheer anarchy, one murder after another. And because of all this, the very land itself weeps, and everything in it is grief stricken. Animals in the fields and birds on the wing, even the fish in the sea are listless and lifeless. But don't look for someone to blame. No finger pointing. You priests are one, are the one in the do- uh, yeah, the one in the dock. You stumble around in broad daylight, and then the prophets take over and stumble all night. Your mother is as bad as you. And then verse 6 says, My people are ruined because they don't know what's right or true. My people are ruined because they don't know what's right or true. We need to teach truth. Because if we don't, the people are ruined. It says, Because you've turned your back on knowledge. I've turned my back on you, priests. Because you refuse to recognize the revelation of God, I'm no longer recognizing your children. The more priests, the more sin. They traded in their glory for shame. See, I, I, I want to make sure that we, we understand this. We need to teach truth in our churches. We need to teach truth in our homes. We need to teach truth to our children. I used to know phone numbers for all kinds of people. had it in my head. I knew their phone number. Just knew it. If I needed to get a hold of somebody, it didn't matter where I was. All I needed was a phone, and I could contact them because I knew their phone number. Now we have phones that keep our contact list in the phone. I don't know anybody's phone number. I just know who to look for in the contact list. God forbid I should lose my phone. How would I get a hold of anybody? I don't know anybody's number. And let's face it, you're in the same boat. Lack of knowledge. How things work. I've said many times, we've lost common sense in our society. We have great book learning sometimes. Sometimes not. (laughs) But we don't have common sense to go with it. The application of knowledge in everyday life. And in our church experiences, we have people who are suffering from anxieties, people who are suffering with addictions, people who are suffering with depressions because they don't know the truth. They don't know God. They haven't been taught God. And we need to live an example before them. Instead of living an exception where we say, well, th- you're supposed to do this, but I have this hang up, so I don't. I do it different. I, I, I don't live like I tell you you should live. I live an exception instead of an example. And that's not right. Our problem is with, with what gives us pleasure. In Hosea... The message translation of this, probably more than some of the other the other versions, says this in a way that's maybe a little harsher uh, to read. Um, it says, verse 8, They pig out on my people's sins. They can't wait for the latest in evil. 
The result, you can't tell the people from the priests, the priests, priests from the people. I'm on my way to make them both pay and take the consequences of the bad lives they've lived. And that's true. We, we say, well, we don't want to offend anybody with the gospel or with a holy life or with righteousness. So we just participate in all the things they do. There's no separation between the church and the world. We're supposed to be living an example, and like I said, we're living an exception. We're focused on what gives you pleasure. I heard someone talking the other day that's like, oh man, it's, it's great when you can reach the point where you can go drinking with your kids and share that experience. And I just, I wanted to cry. That's, that's so heartbreaking. Real joy comes from when you can serve God with your kids, when you can be in church with your kids and share God's presence with your kids. There's no hangover. There's no drunken fights based on misunderstandings because nobody's in their right mind. Instead, you can have peace and joy and fulfillment. See, it comes down to what gives you pleasure. Where, where are you getting your pleasure from? Are you craving good? Or are you craving a temporary pleasure? What is it that you find pleasurable? What is it that you find good? The world sometimes looks at us and says, well, I don't understand why you would want to go to church. That's boring. I don't understand why you'd want to read the Bible. That's boring. I don't understand why you'd want to sing worship songs. That's not that great. I don't understand why you want to do this, that, or the other thing. But here's the reality is when you're in a right relationship with God, when you're drawing closer to God, those things are pleasurable experiences. Do you crave good? I, I guess I could say, do you crave God? Do you want to be in God's presence? Do you want to feel his Holy Spirit? See, we're misunderstood in the world because the world doesn't understand that concept at all. The world doesn't understand how we could get joy from hearing the, the, the gospel preached. How can you sit and listen to somebody and you know, I find that boring. Well, I, I'll tell you what, I, I oftentimes will spend hours in a day listening to different ministers speak. It's one of the great things about having access to, to the Internet is all the stuff you can, you know, stream right on onto your computer or your phone. And so I get to hear a lot of good messages. And I have uh, ministers that I, I have uh, enjoyed listening to over the years. And I guess I could enjoy just having them tell me how wonderful I am and how wonderful the world is and how wonderful God wants everything to be for me and all of this. But, uh, you know, it's good for me sometimes when, when I hear a word that makes me stop and, and re-inventory myself, stop and look and see where I maybe have fallen short and need to do better. That's okay. I actually find that to be pleasurable because i feel like God's speaking to me. I have a, 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 the ability to hear a word from God that maybe this person spoke, but God's ministering it to, to me. His Holy Spirit's bringing it to me. I find that to be great. And Hosea it goes on and it talks about, um, well, let me just read it this way. Verse 10 says, they'll eat. And be as hungry as ever. In other words, there's no satisfaction in the food. Have sex and get no satisfaction. They walked out on me, their God, for a life of rutting with horrors. I told you this is a little harsher translation as you read it. Wine and whiskey leave my people in a stupor. They ask questions of a dead tree, expect answers from a sturdy walking stick. Drunk on sex, they can't find their way home. They've replaced their God with their genitals. That's what it says. 
They worship on the tops of mountains and make a picnic out of religion. I'm going to stop there for just a second. I wrote in here, the Council of Trees. Where does your help come from? It talks about idols there. Images of wood and, you know, the picnic in nature, whatever. Where does your help come from? Well, you know, I get so much help from just, you know, staring at the stars. That's great. God made them. It's fantastic that you find that to be peaceful and enjoyable. But if you're looking to the stars and trying to figure out your sign and see what is the stars are saying to you about what you should do in life or whatever, you're in the wrong place. You're supposed to go to the maker of stars, not the stars. You're supposed to go to the maker of trees, not trees. God has made a beautiful place for us to live while on earth. And yet, God is where our help comes from. My help comes from the Lord. I will look to thee on high. That's, that's really what it comes down to. We have a tendency to make our own God and our own likeness. We... When we do that, we're always good. When we make God in our own likeness, we're we're never dealing with sin because whatever I do is okay. I can justify whatever it is I do. That's kind of back to the council of trees again. Instead of going to God and saying, God, I I need you. God, I I I want to do what's right before you. God Show me and teach me. God, speak to me, direct me. That's having a relationship with God. Not making God in your own likeness. The big picture on, on this is, is, is really, how do I follow God? We talk about it. We need to follow God. Well, how do I do that? And, and it really starts with my attitude at the beginning of each day when I, when I just say, God, guide me, direct me, and I, and I keep looking for him, and I, and, and I recognize when I make a mistake, I'm willing to hear when I've, when I've made a mistake so I can correct it. That's how I follow God. I build a relationship with him. As I said last week, you can... You can begin studying in his word. That helps you hear his voice. But it's putting God first. It's listening to God first. And we have those that, that you know, they'll, they'll minister. And, well, God says this, and, and you know, the Lord says that. And, and you look at the fruit of it, and, and those things aren't happening. It's not happening the way they say. So is it that God's wrong or they're wrong? If you're going to say God says, you need to make sure you've heard from God. And if you don't learn to listen for God's voice, if you don't learn to listen for his leading, if you don't learn to walk with God, how in the world can you tell somebody what God's saying if you can't hear God for yourself in the beginning, in the first place? How do I follow God? It's a daily experience. Talking to God every day. Is it a job? No, it shouldn't be. It might be a, a learning curve to re, reset your pattern, if you will. But that's how I begin to follow God. It's a daily devotion. And that always, you know, invokes uh, ideas of a book with, you know, daily devotionals in it. Um, you know, Pastor Steve does the God's Food for Thoughts um, where there's a daily thought. Those are great. Devotion is the idea of an allegiance to God. There's a daily allegiance to God. There's a daily walking with God. There's a daily communication with God. That's what we need in the big picture if we're going to know the truth, if we're going to follow God. Getting started out right, you know, you oftentimes hear people talk about first thing in the morning. 
getting started out right. That's because if you put it off to the second thing you're going to do, then it might becomes the third thing and the fourth thing, and pretty soon you've gone all day and you haven't done anything at all like you intended. I try, not perfect, but I try in the morning when I first wake up, I try and take a couple of minutes and just and just talk to God. God, you know what my day holds. You know what I've I've got. You know I've got to do this and I've got this thing going on here. But God, I just ask you to help me get it done. Give me wisdom in how to get through these things. God, show me what you want me to do today. God, help me to draw closer to you. Father, help me to reflect you today, each day. And that may not be the way you do things. Maybe you don't do anything, and that's not a bad way for you to think about starting your day. I don't know. But we got to start out right. We need, you know, here we are at really the first part of the year. And there's always, you know, the New Year's resolutions that everybody makes. And by now, most of you have probably broken most of them because that's just how it goes. Um, I don't know that gyms could survive if there wasn't January because I think it's all the New Year's resolutions that power them financially for for a big chunk of the year so the the reality is right here at the beginning of the year change your pattern change your pattern just start your day out right start your year out right here in 2023 just begin to speak to god every morning before your feet even hit the floor god I want to walk with you today. I want to know you better today. God, I want to be more like you today. Father, I want you to show me how I need to go through my day. However you want to pray that, but give it to God first thing in the morning, right out of the bat, uh, off the bat, right out of the chute. Just, just start walking with God. And if you'll do that for this month, the rest of the year will be a lot easier because you'll be able to replicate that by, by doing it this month, it'll become a habit and it'll be a good habit. You'll have a habit of spending time right off the bat with the truth. It'd be a lot easier for you to live an example of God's truth. It'll help you know the truth. You'll find that you'll have discernment. The Bible says you can ask for wisdom and he'll give it to you, but you know, this is the beginning of wisdom is knowing the truth, knowing God. So you have an opportunity right now to, to do those things, to set a new pattern in your life. We've been studying Hosea and, and how Gomer was anything but true to Hosea, the shadow or type of Israel and even of ourselves. Let's not be like Gomer, let's pursue the truth in 2023 and let God lead us, direct us, guide us, and build us. And that's it for this week. 